Thank you, Betty. Thank you. And um, the preacher got up and said, Stand to your feet. We'll start with a prayer. If you have a need, let it be heard, saints, let it be known. We're all a family, and you're not alone. That's when he saw her in the back of the church, her silence and sadness crowd out the hurt. The kind shepherd knew just what to say. I need to know before we pray an unspoken request does anybody have one here today did you come with the burden you can share a need in your life just lift up your hand to the Spoken request. Well, the preacher whispered as she raised her hand, Sweet Holy Spirit, come by her and stand. When her tears started flowing, he had no doubt that at the throne room in heaven her secret was out. Spoken request. Does anybody have one here today? Did you come with a burden you can share? A need in your life. Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you rest. Child, have no fear, our God can hear an unspoken request. Child, have no fear, our God can hear an unspoken request. Open your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 this morning, if you will, please. See my beautiful wife sitting back there. She's not even going to look at me. She's see, she won't even look. She won't even look up at me. That's because she knows after that something else. Is Honey, do you love me like you used to love me before you started loving me like you love me now? I share with you this morning out of chapter 13, verse 3. You get a quick sword drill this morning, but in verse 3 of chapter 13, we see, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Now, we've spoken on those passages of scriptures at length, but simply this. <clears throat> Someone who's not a born-again believer in Jesus Christ cannot even grasp that passage of Scripture. Simply this, that as I stand before this communion table, I actually stand behind it this morning. Uh, we have, to your left and my right, 
unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. That if we, if we were here in the days of the sacrifice, and here in the days that we had to do sacrifice, and we come into the temple, we would come into the, we would come into the holy place. And as we would walk in, we would see the table of showbread with 12 loaves of bread on it, representing each tribe of the children of Israel. And then we would see a candlestick with seven candles. And the high priest would, would, would light those candles. And that, that light would be just that. It would be used to illuminate the table of showbread. So that light and the oil in each one of those lights represented the Holy Spirit of God. Which means without the Holy Spirit of God, the bread of life cannot be illuminated. So when a lot of people say, a pastor, I don't understand what that says, that, that, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, doesn't Jesus want me to feed the poor? Yes, he does. He does. And though I give my body to be burned, doesn't, does, not, does not Jesus want me to go the extra mile? Yes, he does. And have not charity. Well, aren't, aren't, aren't all those things charity, pastor? Well, they're charity in the worldly sense, yes. But in the spiritual sense, God is saying that no matter what you do in my name, if you don't have me within you, and it's not me behind every one of your motives, you have not this love. It profits you nothing. Nothing. You say, well, well, I, I, I gave money and food to the, to the center of hope. Doesn't God want me to do those things? Yeah, he does. But not in a legalistic way. He wants you to be driven by his Holy Spirit. Amen. He wants you to do it for him. You do it for him, you don't tell anybody. That's right. You don't put it in the newspaper. Because he sees these things in secret and rewards you openly. Amen? Amen. That's, what he that's what he tells us. Um, organizations, denominations, religious institutes, many of them fall far from the truth of God today. Yes. This is the kind of love that Jesus talks about. He talks about this returning this kind of love in his word. We've been studying that on Wednesday nights. So this will be a little bit of tandem or a hook on to, if you will, on Wednesday night studies. But this love, he talks about a first love to us, to the born-again believers. That wanting to be in the presence of each other all the time. 42 years of marriage, I can stand before you folks unashamedly and say I love my wife. Amen. More and more every day. Yes, even her. <laughs> But you know, a husband or a wife may remain faithful pertaining to matters that involve each other. They may remain faithful pertaining to matters that involve each other. But there may be a decline in their first love with each other. And likewise, a brother or sister in Christ can be do all these things. Give great amounts of money to charities and help people and help the poor and sacrifice themselves. But despite their activity, their work or their, their sacrifice, it doesn't, God says it doesn't compensate for the love you have to me. If it's all about you, it profits you nothing. Martha, in the New Testament, Mary, in the New Testament. Sisters, give us a good picture. If you'll turn to Luke chapter 10 with me, Chap Luke chapter 10 gives us a good picture of this, this first love that the Lord talks to us about. Luke chapter 10, please. <coughs> And 
And I want you to understand that both of these ladies acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Yes. Both of these ladies. One doesn't have anything on the other as far as their understanding and belief that Jesus Christ is Lord in their life. But what we see here is, is in, in verse 38, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does not thou care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. What is she doing? She's sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's spending that time with Jesus. While Martha, who also acknowledges him as Lord and calls him such, is running around doing good things. And she thinks that Martha should be running around doing good things, and she's spending time with Jesus. She's spending time with Jesus. That's what it's like to return to our first love. I'll direct your attention to Revelation chapter 2 with me. It's the very last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 2. I'll give you a moment to get there. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. We covered this on Wednesday night. And how thou cannot, canst bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And hast found them liars. These are all good things in the, the eyes of the Lord. And hast borne and hast patience and hast for my name's sake. Has labored and hast not fainted. But Jesus goes on to say in verse 4. Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou has left thy first love. Oh, they didn't lose their salvation. They just stopped spending time with him. They're doing all these good things, but they're doing it for themselves and not having love to the Lord. This is what he's telling them. You remember when you were dating your spouse? I got to go a ways back. But uh, if you can remember when you were dating your spouse... And some of you don't have to think back very long. <clears throat> and some of it, some of you have it on the horizon yet. Yes. But do you remember how you longed to be near your spouse, him or her? How, how, how you just longed to be near them. And, 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 24 hours a day just wasn't enough to be with them. Hours on the telephone. Now I'm dating myself. Not on the computer, not on the emails, not on the text. Hours on the telephone. The letters that we would write back and forth to each other, the notes, the cards. When in, what, what made us do that? Absence made the heart grow fonder. And, and so when you couldn't be with each other, you were dwelling on that person. And so you had to fill that time with, with, with them. So what would you do? You would write a card. You would pen something down. You would talk to them on the telephone. Today you send them a text or an email or Twitter or all Facebook, all those other things that go on today. That's what it means. That's what Jesus means when I have one thing against you. You didn't lose your salvation. You just got away from your first love. That first love was a condition, by the way. It was a condition. It was an environment. You longed to be with the Lord. You longed to be with the Lord. That's what he's talking about. You know, you remember holding hands? 
You remember, you know, you're all getting marriage counseling today, whether you want it or not. You remember holding hands? You remember going for walks with each other? Simple things. You didn't have to go spend money. You didn't have to, to, to entertain. Just you had to spend time together. Time's the greatest gift that you can give anybody, but especially the Lord. See, he, time doesn't run out on him, but it does on us. Time is the greatest gift we can give anyone. This is the kind of love he's talking about. You remember writing notes, cards, letters. What came between the two of you now that you don't spend that kind of time with each other? What came between the two that you don't or can't? This is what Jesus is talking about when he says losing the first love, not spending time with him, with him. But you may just be stagnant because you lost your first love. But the nice thing is you can find your way back. You can find your way back. Remember when you first got married? Most people right after they marry, what do they have? A honeymoon. A honeymoon. Remember when you first got saved? You had a spiritual honeymoon. I hope. Some people never took the honeymoon. Some people, when they get married to their spouse, are so poor that they couldn't take a honeymoon. Right, honey? <laughs> but if you didn't ever take the honeymoon, what's stopping you now? Go take the honeymoon. I say that to the spouses. I say that to you spiritually. If you've never gone on a spiritual honeymoon with the Lord, what's stopping you? But yourself. Go on the honeymoon. Get back to the first love, Jesus tells us. Daily Bible reading. Prayer. Prayer. Talking about you with God. Talking to God all about yourself. Take a look with me in Matthew chapter 24. No one knows us better than Christ. My wife may think she knows me. I may think I've seen every trick she can pull, but that's just a challenge to make her come up with more. And uh, so, but Jesus knows everything there is to know about you and I. Inside and out, up, up and down. He knows it all. And he said something here, very prophetic. And we as Christians suffer from this. If you look with me in chapter 20, 24 and verse 12, Jesus said, and because iniquity shall abound, what's the rest of that say, folks? The love of many shall wax cold. Did it say the love would go away? Did it say the love would be non-existence? No, the love would wax cold. I would venture to say to every spouse and every married couple in this house this morning that if I walked up to you men and said, you don't love your wife. I probably would be wise to duck. I probably would be wise to duck. Because even I myself have a difficult time believing that a husband and wife that sits in the house of God in worship doesn't love each other. So the love's there. Every day may be the same old, same old. But you all have the power to change that, don't you? You have the power to hold hands. You have the power to spend together. You have that power to do that. You have a power to change that. Sounds like marriage counseling. But Jesus tells us the same thing. That because iniquity gets in the way, our love can wax cold. And you know what? Because the children get in the way and the grandchildren get in the way, 
and, and the thought of paying bills gets in the way. You know, none of those things would exist if you didn't have that spouse. Amen? And every day that you and I get up out of bed, that day wouldn't exist but for God. Amen. We're not in control of that. Leaving our first love, I want to take you back to Revelation chapter 2 as we begin to close. I want you to try to remember where you once were for God. Where you once were for God this morning. I want you to try to remember where you once were for God in your love for Him through Jesus Christ. And maybe you've never arrived at that point. Maybe you've, you've come to know Christ as your Savior, you're married to Him now, you're a part of the bride, but you never took the honeymoon. I'm encouraging you at the, at the invitation to get into the honeymoon. I'm also encouraging the husband and wives. If you didn't take a honeymoon, take a honeymoon. I don't care how old you are. They have his and her walkers. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2, verse 5 Remember, therefore, from whence thou art, what's that word, folks? Fallen. 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 You know something? There's not a one of us here that if we trip and fall, you can't get back up. And if you can't do it on your own, somebody will help you. So we have no excuse when it comes to the Lord either. If we're having trouble getting up on our own, all we have to do is ask him for help. Amen. And believe that he can give it. Remember, therefore, from whence that are fallen and repent. In other words, turn away from the things that are keeping you away from him. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. He's not talking about a loss of salvation. He's talking to the churches during the church age, which we're studying on Wednesday nights. And he's talking about if a church isn't going to be close to him and follow him, he'd just take them out. He'd just, he'd just set them aside. He'd just set them aside. Oh, to God, that we would never be such, that we'd be found faithful in this house as one body and one accord till the day that our great hope is fulfilled that he appears in the clouds of glory to take us home. I'm going to ask our song leader to come and lead us in a, in a closing invitation song. If you need to come to this altar today and you say, well, that's not just a ritual. It's, it's a willingness to step out for God. It's a willingness to say, Lord, you tell me that if I'm ashamed of you before men, that you're going to be ashamed of me before my Father in heaven. Stepping out is a good, good way to come closer to the Lord, to return to that first love, not being ashamed to talk to Him in the presence of men, privately between you and Him. You. Returning to your first love means getting back to where you once were for God. Returning to, to your first love means taking that honeymoon. Honeymoons are fun. Well, most of them are. I've seen some crazy ones. But they haven't been Christians. Return to your first love. Amen? Amen. We're going to stand and sing two verses of an invitation song, please.